Hello, um, welcome to our first uh, Afrofuturist UK meetup, um, the first of, of many, we hope. Uh, so I guess I'll start off with an introduction to what we do and what we're about. So Afrofuturist UK, it's basically like an Afrofuturist collective. Um, we're based in the UK, but we're based in like different cities around the UK, so Manchester, Birmingham, London. Um, and we're really interested in Afrofuturism, but we're interested in how we can use it to inspire um, I suppose activism, but like using technology. Um, so we all have this like a core group of us, and we have slightly like, different interests and different sort of connections to Afrofuturism. Um, hello, welcome. Uh, yeah, so the idea that we had was that we would um, want to start off like a kind of Afrofuturist curriculum. So throughout this year, we're going to be putting on events that are all based around a particular topic. Um, we have a guest speaker who's an expert in the field. And the idea really is that for the following two months, it's really a time for everyone to kind of experiment and you know, make use of the things that they've learned. We have obviously our Facebook group, we have a Slack group which you can use to keep in touch. So if you're working on any projects, let us know. Um, obviously there's Twitter, of course, there's Black Twitter and Black Tumblr. So just a shout out if you have, if you have any projects that you want to share. But this really is a space where we come together, we do imaginative, cool, creative stuff. We just support each other. Um, so I'll introduce our guest speaker, so Lola Odilola, who is the founder of Black Girl Tech, um, which is a kind of a community which is all based around empowering black, especially black women through technology, so encouraging engagement with tech. Um, she runs amazing workshops in London, um, yeah, and they are amazing. You should definitely check out like her Twitter because like see all the photos of people coding away, and it's like amazing seeing so many sisters in the room like hacking away. It's so cool. Um, so she'll be, she'll be introducing uh, this topic um, for the season, which is all about the web. So without further ado, uh, Lola, come on to the front. Yeah, I'm Thank you. Um, first, I just want to say thank you to Florence for like, inviting me down. I feel a lot more like speaking stuff this year, um, because I think it's important that people know a lot more about the web that they do. I think it's important that people aren't just consumers of the web, but they are actual like, participants in making it and shaping it. And especially for minorities, um, whether that's like gender minorities, ethnic minorities, um, LGBT minorities, a lot of minorities have found safe spaces on the web, places like Twitter, places like Tumblr. So it just makes sense then that if you found a safe space in that portion of the web that you should also be able to create and like you know build and shape it to actually what it should look like, not just maybe do with what's there. So yeah, um, a little introduction about who I am. So, I have been, so, just like, <laughs> so yeah, who am I? Um, my name is Lola. I am 24 years old, so I guess like, that's the basics, right? Um, and I went to uni and studied institutional creative writing. So I'm also a writer and I still do that as well. Like, I still write professionally and I still code professionally as well. Um, and I got into coding because after I graduated university, I discovered that actually writing doesn't pay you. I'm a poet, and poets don't get paid until they're dead, which was kind of like useless for me, like for right now being alive. Um, so I decided that I was going to try and expand my horizons and do other types of writing, like I can also write essays, and I've had like, um, essays and articles published in various um, publications, but I thought to myself, outside of Twitter, no one really knows I write, so I should probably go on a website. That's not just a blog, but that's like an actual website to showcase different styles of writing. I was on Job Seekers Allowance at the time, and if anyone has ever been on Job Seekers Allowance, it's the worst thing. Like, it is, am I allowed to swear? Um, it's like a bag of shit. Like, it's like a bag of shit. Um, so, which also meant I couldn't afford to pay anyone. I was getting like 56 pounds a week or something. So, I couldn't afford to pay anyone to like build this website for me. So, I had to build it myself. Um, and I went on this website called Code Candy, which is like a tutorial. Hi, I'm Lola. I'm Lola. Um, so I basically went on the website called Code Academy, which is like a tutorial site. Um, I'll show you some of that later if you're interested. And 
that basically just opened my eyes. I literally thought there were two programming languages that you needed to learn to like, get a basic website. But Codecademy showed me there was like loads, and I had time because I was unemployed. So I decided to explore and experiment and find out kind of what I liked. And I discovered that I quite liked this coding thing, and I quite enjoyed what I was learning and how I was learning and all that kind of stuff. So I went to a boot camp, after boot camp, got a job, and that's how I became a software engineer. Um, but I think the key thing for me in that whole process was I, I only learned how to code out of necessity. Like, I was never exposed to coding. I was never exposed to um, I just get a rush of hands, like, who's ever coded here before? And how, when, when did you learn how to code? Like, what was the, was that at school? Was it like in your oh, class? Oh, you started teaching us. What's the kind of um, and you guys, we just said our names. See, oh, welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, if no one can learn how to code at school. You learn know how to code at school. Then. Uh, at uni. At uni. At secondary school? A little bit. Okay, so I know her, like, actually outside of this room. I went to school with her cousin. In Kingsdale, we did not learn how to code. Actually, like in my secondary school, we didn't learn how to code. Like the boys were pushed to like me take IT, and that's where you kind of learned how to do the creative things with IT. And then I and like girls were pushed more like IT TCSE, which is where you learn how to like make formulas in Excel, which is like the boring side of IT, which is drag. Um, so when I was at my bootcamp course, part of the bootcamp was like three months learning how to code, three months work experience. And in the work experience phase, I was looking for jobs and I realized that actually nobody here looks like me, but the industry is talking a lot about diversity. Like the industry is screaming, screaming, screaming diversity. And I come from South London, which if you don't know is predominantly black. Like South London is either mini Nigeria or mini Jamaica, depending on where South London is <laughs> which, as you can imagine, is predominantly black as well. So coming into a space where there was a lot of talk about diversity but still not seeing anyone who looks like me was just really strange. And another thing I realised is that the only reason I'm here is because of necessity. And I was never given the opportunity to actually find out if I wanted to code, like if this was actually something I was interested in. The period between year 9 and year 11 where you're supposed to technically experiment like pick subjects and just like have a play. Coding was never one of those things. So that's kind of like the inception of Black Girl Tech comes about, right? Where it's about creating a safe space for Black girls and women to explore technology and to explore coding and to just figure out if they'll like, like it. It's not about making anyone into software engineers or like unicorn programmers or anything like that. It's literally just come to a workshop try this thing out and see if you like it. And if you like it, there's support here, there's resources here, there's um, you know, questions, you can ask your questions, you can do whatever you want, but just try it out first. And if you don't like it, that's fine. You might actually spark an idea, you know, when we say to our um, attendees, like, think of a website you want to build for something. Like, if you were going to build a website, what would it be for? And then someone says, you know what, I'll build a website for like a hair shop. And they may never, they may not have a hair shop and they may never want to code, but actually now they have an idea for a hair shop. And what happens is they're going to find someone who's going to build them a website for their hair shop that they are now going to actually like establish as a business and as a company. So it's not just about learning how to code, but it's also about like generating ideas and generating thoughts and just generating creativity in general. I think um, it's very, very important to have minorities in the room when you're building these products. Um, I know we're like Google Hangouts, but there's a particular company whose name I won't mention, but I just didn't mention accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> where um, they have this feature where you take a picture of yourself or your friends or whatever, it categorizes it into the photos album. And in the photos album, it will add tags. So it'll be like, you know, this is you, or this is Mark, or this is Stephanie. 
whoever. Um, a friend of mine took pictures of him, he and his friends, um, and the app categorized them as gorillas. Wow. Now, the app did that. Nobody, nobody said that they were gorillas. No one like put the pictures into a gorillas folder. The app did that. But what does that mean? It means that, number one, they didn't test their product very well. Because if they tested on any black people, they would have probably caught that before it went into production and before you know, common people were using it. Number two, it means that when the product was being built, there were no minorities in it. And these are the kind of problems we face constantly with racist technology, where it's the bias of those who are building the technology that shapes the tech. And this is why I think it's important for us to create and for us to build. Because we, like, immediately, as soon as you put black people into a room, or as soon as you put women into a room, you're not going to get sex to robots. You <coughs> built this thing, do you know what I mean? And they'll be tested on women and stuff like that. As soon as you put minorities into a room, ethnic minorities into a room, you're not going to get racist AI or you know, racist virtual reality stimulations and stuff like that because we are part of the creation process.